Now, what are the solutions? What can we do to protect the rights of voters? You'll hear from a number of people that so-called provisional ballot is the answer, that this is nothing really to worry about because when someone is, shows up and they're not on the roll, they can cast a provisional ballot. Uh, provisional ballots are an only, only a partial and really an inadequate solution. For many, many provisional ballots simply are never counted for reasons that are quite murky. 70% uh, of them were rejected in Wisconsin. In a recent primary in Ohio, 20% were rejected. The federal government, through the Election Assistance Commission, says it is not a substitute for, for actually casting a vote. So if not provisional ballots, what are some of the solutions? Between now and November, what can happen in this election? Uh, well, for voters, there are a few things. First of all, we would encourage all voters to check the rolls and make sure you are registered to vote. You can call your local election board. You can go on websites like uh, govote.org. Make sure you're registered to vote. There are so many new voters and so many problems that you have to double check. If you show up at the polling place and there's a long line, maybe the voting machine is broken, don't take no for an answer. If you're on the rolls, demand a paper ballot. It's called an emergency ballot. If, you, if they tell you you're not on the rolls, uh, go to an election judge or call the election protection hotline. That is 1-866-OUR-VOTE, which is a whole coalition of nonpartisan groups that are standing by, will be standing by to protect people's rights to vote. And uh, if, if you can't reach them or, depending on what they say, do get a provisional ballot, knowing that it is an uh, imperfect solution. But whatever you do, don't take no for an answer. If you have the right to vote, you should make sure to cast your vote. What should officials do? Well, number one, stop purging. The deadline has passed. There's no excuse for purges, even if they're well done now, and far too many of them are full of errors and are not well done. It's very important that local officials, the people who staff the desks in the thousands of polling places across the country, those local officials need to know what the rules are and the standards are for challenging so that you don't have these challenges become harassment and intimidation of voters. And again, have enough emergency paper ballots. It turns out this paper thing makes a big difference uh, so that people can cast their votes. Those are between now and November. We're hoping that everybody thinks about what the long-term solutions might be as well, especially after the election is over. Uh, Presidents Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford studied the Florida fiasco, and they made a very clear statement, which was one of the reasons we have, even now, historically low voter turnout rates, is because in ways Americans often don't realize, we have one of the worst voter registration systems among democracies. And we really believe that going forward, people ought to be thinking about how to significantly improve voter registration and move towards what's very possible, universal voter registration, which is how they do it in other countries. It's how they do it in Canada. It is how they do it in England. Uh, if voter registration were automatic, say when you turn 18, and permanent, so it didn't matter if you moved, it would add up to 50 million Americans to the rolls, eligible Americans. It would deal with all kinds of problems around lists and registration, potential fraud, any kinds of problems like that. You would have fewer last-minute crunches on election day. And if you had election day registration as a fail-safe, which you now have in eight states and it works very well, then you really would have it that every single eligible citizen who wanted to vote could vote. And that it would be far better than having to go through these crises, challenges, purges, uh, and political fistfights every two and four years. So with that, we're very happy to uh, answer any questions you have.